Welcome to Ho Channel International. Have you ever wondered if it's even worth it to be a good citizen? If God is just going to start this earth over? This video will tell you exactly why it is. If it's going to fail, I mean, every one of those kingdoms failed. The, the lion that was, you know, Babylon, the bear that was the Medes and the Persians, the leopard that was Greece, they all came and went. That's right. And every one of those leads down to the final kingdom that God establishes. And I guess if every human government is going to collapse anyway, if they're all going to fail, if none of them is going to give me my, I mean, it's an election year here in the United States. If whoever is elected this fall isn't going to give me my utopia anyway, why bother? I mean, why should I be involved? Why should I care? Why should governments even try if we're going to fail? I think it comes down to life itself. I remember one of the most life-changing conversations I ever had was a few years ago on Christmas Eve. I was driving down the street with my son, Gabriel, who was about 14, 15 years old at the time. And he said, Dad, with a lot of excitement, you should live each day as if it were your last. Dad, if you had only 24 hours to live, what would you do? My son struck me so directly to the heart, and he laid into me all <laughs> excited <laughs> that, that I had to get up in church that Sabbath and say, I'm tossing out my, my sermon, and I, my son gave me my outline. <laughs> Live every day as if it were your last. You could either complain about your government or make it the best possible citizen you can. Kind of like a, an American president once challenged us, ask not what your country can do for you, Ask what you can do for your country. In other words, how can you as a citizen make this a better place? Not just sit around and wait for your capital city to turn around and do things perfectly. Right, right. Because otherwise, all governments have their end, just like all life. My life eventually will come to an end if the Lord doesn't come immediately. I have high hopes. I have high expectations. But in case I need to go to my grave soon, what will my life amount to? Right. What can our nation amount to while I'm living within its borders? And, and instead of, of, of the what's going to happen when it ends, what am I doing while it's existing? That's the more powerful but still, thing. So I, I absolutely agree. I mean, I, I've sat with a lot of dying people, a lot, more than I thought I'd ever have to. And I've noticed, you know, a lot of them, they can live at the end of their life if they've got 10 minutes to go. They're about to punch the clock. I guess that's a rude way of saying it, but it's, it's, it's a fact. They're going to punch the clock. And they got 10 minutes to go. If they were poor, they can live with that. If they had a hard life, they can live with that. If they were never famous, they can live with that. But the people I've noticed who kind of feel like I wasted it, that nearly drives them mad. I didn't do anything with my time. That's overwhelming. And it's one of the saddest moments of ministry when you see that up close. It's yeah, true. Those are the ones who panic. They, yeah. they panic. But still it comes down to, all right, I completely agree. God asks us to be light. He asks us to be salt. He asks us to be a presence in this world and to make a difference. There's no question about it. I guess the point is, is if God's going to wipe the slate clean anyway, I mean, the statue crumbles in Daniel 2, the pieces blow away, all the worldly kingdoms are gone, then the stone grows. God sets up his government. He doesn't infuse it into what we have. He wipes out what we have and sets up his own. So what am I trying to accomplish by being a good citizen? Well, the beauty is do what you can while you have it. We are told that, it, that the times of difficulty will come. And here's our opportunity at a time of peace to do what's right before the Lord, not only to live a, a perfect, a, a right li a life among ourselves, but to make a difference in somebody else's life as you've done unto the least of these, my brethren. That's how we as citizens make a difference. The greatness of a nation is not known by its government. The greatness of a nation is known by its citizens. Well, there's a powerful statement because quite often, every time I'm disgruntled, I mean, I read the news every morning and I get irritated. All right, look at what we got for government. And it doesn't matter who's in power. I've been saying that for years. Every government comes and goes, oh, I'm irritated. Look what they're doing. But what you've just said kind of takes the, the, the attention not so much, I mean, it's not so much on those in elected office, even though That's I right. think we ought to hold them accountable. Yet at the same time, the real difference is not made there, is it? It's that's not right. made at the... The answer is not with the government. The answer has to be in our hearts. And that's why the Lord is with us. He will bless the nation when he blesses the people. Israel was blessed throughout Scripture when they gave their life unto the Lord. It's when the citizens walked away from the Lord that you began to feel the shadow. Yeah. There's power in that. 
And our viewers today, many would wonder, well, if our government was just doing this or if it wasn't doing that, then the Lord would bless our country. No, it has more to do with our citizenry. It's like a local church. What makes a good church, having the right pastor or having the right church members? Well, there's a powerful question. We do like to blame the pastor. I guess there's a, there is an analogy. I mean, there's a balance there for both, but a church is known by its members. Every church has a character and a personality, and that's defined by its membership. Pastors come and pastors go, but a congregation defines that local church. And I think citizens define their nation. And that's a wonderful opportunity that Christians can seize. Well, I, I think that's probably right. I've often wondered, you know, all right, I'm not going to turn the world upside down. I will not, no matter how many friends I get on my side, bring utopia. That's right. It's not going to happen. But why do I try? Well, I do serve a higher kingdom. I serve a God who's going to establish a kingdom, and he's asked me to tell people, hey, here's what I've got planned. But better than telling is showing. Come to my home. Here's what it looks like when you live with God. So you can prepare to be citizens of that eternal kingdom that is eminent. It's coming soon.